you welcome to this training I want to talk about the nature of a husband in the family <clears throat> a husband first of all is a disciple of Jesus any man that is not a disciple of Jesus is not a husband according to the kingdom culture it doesn't matter how much money he has his ability to pay the bride price of a woman or whatsoever, as long as he is not a disciple of Jesus, as long as the word of God is not reigning in his heart, he is not a husband. A husband is a disciple of Jesus. That's the definition. A husband is a disciple of Jesus, not was or used to. That is who a husband is. The first thing you need to understand is, as a man that is under the disciple, that is a disciple of Jesus, you need to understand what it means to love the Lord. To love the Lord. But how can you love the Lord when you don't know the Lord? How can you love the Lord when you don't know His way? So, as a husband, you should be able to love the Lord based on who God is to you personally. You must have a personal relationship, a personal understanding about who God is to you as a man, as a husband. You must be able to love the Lord and you can only love the Lord from the place of knowledge. The knowledge of who he is. The knowledge of who he has revealed himself to you as. So being a husband or a potential husband, it is a necessity for you to understand that your knowledge about who God is personally to you will determine how you love yourself. God expects you to love yourself. God expects you to love others the way you love yourself. And the way you love yourself is an extension of how God loves you. That is how a husband, according to the kingdom principle, should think. Loving people based on how you love yourself due to God's dealings with you. Then you need to come to the third dimension and that is loving others as Christ has loved you. This is the three dimension a husband must always operate. Loving the Lord with all your heart. You shouldn't love a woman above God. No, it is the Lord first. Then the way God loves you, you love yourself. And that capacity of loving yourself, you use it to love others. And as you love others, you also need to love others the way Christ has loved you. It's very important. Which means your outward display of love becomes the reality of the extension of who God is to you. So until there is a personal relationship with your maker as a husband, you will never be able to function fully in the dimension of God's grace and of God's mercy. Let me talk to you about a husband. A husband is not a perfect man. A husband is a man that has flaws, he has his own fears, he has his own worries, he has his own doubts, he has his own struggles, he has his own trauma, he's an emotional being, he's an intellectual being, he's a social being, he's an, emo he's an uh, 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 in financial being, he is vulnerable as every other person. A husband is an individual that is fighting the good fight of faith 
that is following Jesus, that is trusting God for help. He's not a perfect man. He makes mistakes. He has flaws. He doesn't have it all. He doesn't know it all. He hasn't seen it all. A husband. A husband is a man that needs help. And a man that admits he needs help. A husband is a man that is appreciative because of what Christ has done in his life. It has brought him to a place of being grateful. A husband is not just a man that has paid the dowry or the bride price of a woman, but a man that knows the value of a woman outside sex and outside beauty. A husband is a man that understands his purpose in Christ. He is a man that understands his calling in Christ. He, he knows where he's coming from. He, he knows where he's going to and, and he knows where he is in this present stage of his life. The understanding of purpose and life assignment makes a man a husband. And that is the reality you must embrace. What strengthens you as a man becoming a husband is the understanding of your purpose and your life assignment and choosing a woman that aligns with your purpose and with your life assignment. So you don't choose a woman. That is why, that is why Adam says, Now this is the bone of my bone, the flesh of my flesh. This one has the same purpose that I have, has the same assignment that I have. So as a man, what made you choose your wife? Potential fathers or potential husbands. This is the pattern. Without the understanding of your purpose and life assignment, you won't, you won't succeed. As a, as a husband, you're supposed to lead. But how can you lead your wife if you're not led by the Holy Spirit and the scriptures? You're supposed to lead. You are not supposed to function in indecision. You're supposed to lead. Do not stay in a relationship or a marriage where it is the woman that dictates what happens. No. It's your duty to lead. You need to be ahead of her. In God's plan, it's your duty to protect. Protect yourself with the word of God. Then protect the woman God has committed to you. Physically, intellectually, emotionally. Your duty is to protect. And that is where your strength comes in as a husband. That is how a husband was designed to function. You're a protector. Your hand is not supposed to beat and abuse a woman. Rather, it's supposed to use it to cover her, to protect her. Protect her from her own ignorance. Yes, she will argue with you sometimes. But let your knowledge stand out with patience and with understanding. Don't let her become a victim of her own ignorance, prejudice, gossip, and things that float around her like Adam allowed it to happen to Eve. Don't. A husband is a provider. Financially speaking, he's a provider. Intellectually speaking, he's a provider. As a husband, you should be able to provide intellectual capacity for your wife. You need to provide physically, spiritually, intellectually, emotionally, socially. Whatsoever your wife needs to become who God wants her to be. You should be able to provide it. But how can you provide when you don't have? You can be able to provide when you allow God to pour into you. Without a personal relationship with the Lord, you won't. At the beautiful gate, the disciples says, silver and gold we do not have, but such that we have, we give unto you. So how can you provide when you don't have? And how can you have when you don't depend on the Lord? It's your duty to teach. 
So be, you, the ability to teach here displays your ability of being a disciple because until you're a student of the word, you can't teach your wife. Don't expect her to know. Don't assume she knows. Don't say, ah, are you not a woman? Are you not a wife? You should know all this. No. Teach her to know what will work for the home you have invited her as a wife. Cultivate. A husband should be able to cultivate. Cultivate the best out of your wife. Physically, spiritually, emotionally, intellectually. Leading, providing, teaching, protecting, cultivating. These are the things you submit yourself to the Holy Spirit to do to you. When you can allow the Holy Spirit to do these things to you, then you will have the ability to do it to your wife. And that is why Christ is the head of the man. So a husband is an individual that Christ is the head. Christ dictates his decision. Christ dictates his, 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 his expectation. Christ dictates his choices as a man, as a husband. These things are not things you become overnight. It's a journey. Sometimes it will take you 10 years after marriage before you begin to display all this fullness of it. So wives, be patient. All these things you're hearing about, a husband is not something that is automatic. It's a growth. And you dear husbands, hear me. Work is the necessity. Work is the reason why the marriage was given to you. The work here has to do with your calling and your life assignment. So you should be able to know your work. It was work that was the first thing that God gave to Adam. Work was the factor why the woman was given to Adam. And the duty of your work, your calling, your capacity, your potential is to dress and keep. That is your capacity as a man, as a husband, to dress and keep, to improve, to protect not just your wife, but everything around you. You're supposed to dress and keep. You're supposed to provide solutions. You're supposed to provide answers to unanswered questions. According to the understanding of your purpose, becoming a husband will become easy through the understanding of your purpose, through the clarity of your calling, and through the details of your life assignment. You're supposed to dress and keep. This is why you need a wife. This is why God gives you a wife. Because of the demand to dress and keep. And this dressing and keeping is not everywhere. You need to find your garden. Oh yes, find your garden. Where has God called you to dress and keep? Is it in the church system? Is it in the political system? Is it in the banking system? It's very important. This is what it means for a man to be your husband. And I will say this to wives or to potential wives. If you do not love the work God has given to your husband to do, you are the biggest problem in his life. If you don't love the work of a man, his work, what God has called him to do, he is not your, he's not your spouse. If you're already married, you have to fall in love with his work. That's the only option. <laughs> There's no room for divorce. But to those that are yet to be married, if you don't love the calling or the profession of a man, don't marry him. Because that is what will determine the sustainability of the marriage. Your garden matters. Identify where God wants you to be. Identify where God wants you to dress and keep. Identify those God have sent you to. As a husband, marriage is needed for the sustainability and for the deploying of the work God has given to you, your purpose, your calling, by dressing and keeping. Solve a problem. Answer a question. 
preserve the idea of God, preserve the plan of God. Beautify the things around you according to the call, according to the understanding of your purpose. Purpose is what makes a man a husband. And the more you discover purpose, the more you become the purpose, the more you become a godly husband. I hope you have gotten value for your time. God bless you. I celebrate you all.